Good morning, folks. We had a few small eruptions off the western limb, but nothing major on our star. Pretty major science news today, though, as we begin over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours were mostly quiet. Apart from those limb eruptions, the focus is on the coronal holes facing Earth. Folks, we'll have more geomagnetic storms this week as we're still within the enhanced stream of the previous coronal holes, re-ramping back up in plasma stream speed this morning. Those next coronal hole impacts do have a good chance at the stronger geomagnetic effects. Eyes open this week. And speaking of eyes open, this is the annual Sentinel Fleet video from the ionosphere and magnetosphere effects monitoring to the solar wind monitors and the coronagraphs at L1 to the orbiting observatories further out and those sun diving to learn more about the solar wind processes. The two probes, along with stereo, and I notice stereo B is now off the eyes list. Technically it is still out there, but it has been broken for a few years. We're heading over next to MDPI Forest. That same check crew we've shown a couple of times the last few months is at it again, solar activity forcing of forest growth. They've been working these correlations for a while and we're happy to see the fruits of this labor show up even during the high pollution period. Couldn't shake the sun. Folks, it's not often I find a piece of solar forcing I didn't know about or hadn't involved in the models, but in this case, it's not really a new idea. It's just sunlight heating. The problem is that the extra afternoon heat to the top of the ocean on sunny days is wholly ignored in climate models. I think my brain almost exploded last night. This is important because it's a major diurnal heat flux. The oceans control the atmosphere, and not only does this jack the Earth energy budget outside of the realm of modern climate models, but without this water heat effect, say under clouded out skies from a volcano or cosmic rays, the heat disappears and the ice age can begin that way as well. Simple. We have an update on Earth's record rotation speed. It is speeding up some more. Last time we looked was less than a month ago and it had been raised from two weeks earlier up to an average of 0.16 milliseconds too fast per day with a total excess of 58 milliseconds on the year. That's gone up now to 0.2 and we are 70 milliseconds fast on the year in terms of our prediction. Each time we check they move the bar a bit further and further, faster and faster. Kind of like how the bar keeps getting moved in other places, like we went from two weeks to flatten the curve, and now it's two masks, and let's change the RNA and DNA sequences in our bodies. This is, of course, important, not the joke, for a number of reasons. The religious see it as the shortening of the days, and it is. The catastrophists recognize that while humans may not notice milliseconds, that doesn't mean the thermoelectric equilibrium locking the crust to the low velocity zone won't notice it, or the large low shear velocity provinces. Slips, heaves, crashes, plunges, twists, sways. No, you don't need to hold on to a railing, but the crust might. Lastly, folks, we've got an excellent new high complexity look at the heliospheric current sheet and the wavy rippling shape that flows through these systems. While I can admit, the paper is less useful if you aren't trying to model solar wind and interplanetary magnetic fields in your spare time, but just look at this radial portrayal. This is important because since NASA suggested it from observations in this video, there has been nothing but confirmation that it holds at the galactic scale as well. Our galaxy is the rippling wavy current sheet, and that's why the galactic magnetic reversal is not at the equator. Crossing the plane does nothing at the galactic scale, and that takes millions and millions of years. But the galactic current sheet hits us every 12,000 years, just like the sun sheet hits us about every week. The sheets hit much more often because the sheets move much faster than the orbiters, Earth or the Sun in the galaxy's case. It delivers the system magnetic reversal, a plasma and dust density change. It's already triggering the solar system shift and has outburst the nearby stars towards the center of the galaxy. We are next. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn all about the next disaster event with our book over at otf.cells.com. We've got other books and cool observer gear available as well. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.